we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that you said where two or three are gathered together in your name. There will you be in the midst of them. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Move up and down every aisle. I thank you, Lord, no one under the sound of my voice will sit here in discomfort or pain. Father, you said you sent your word and it healed them. So Lord, I thank you for healing to manifest even as the word goes forth. I thank you, Lord, as I decrease, you'll increase. I pray less of me and more of you, none of me and all of you. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Father, those things that you would have me to say to these, your sheep. And Lord, I thank you, they are anointed to hear. They're here not only with their natural ears, but they're here with their spirits. And I thank you, our lives will be transformed from the truth that we receive today. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray and let all that agree shout amen. amen. Give that good looking person next to you a big old hug. Tell them you're glad to see them. Boy, if we ain't careful, we can have praise for an hour. Why don't they just get you going? See, all you forgot about bills you owe, you ain't got the money to pay. You were praising the Lord, man. You forgot about people you want to slap, people you don't like, people been messing with you. You forgot all that. You were in the presence of the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's what the word says. So that's why you want to, you want to, when you're bothered in trouble, don't try to start a fight. You want to get in the light. Amen. You want to get in the word, man. Well, today <clears throat> I talked to you about uh, a word that the Lord gave me concerning what's going to transpire in my life from 60 to 70. And the Lord said that at 70, there are things that he's called me to do in ministry that will not begin until after I turn 70. So from 60, which after my birthday on Sunday, to 70, I'm in training. And as I was praying about that training, here's the thing, the word that the Lord gave me is now every word that I speak to everybody that I meet, has to be an encouraging, positive word. I'm like, oh, Jesus. You know, we know the same folk. <laughs> so immediately, <clears throat> that let me know two things. Number one, that speaking encouraging, positive words is going to transform not only my life, but the city, the church, probably impact the state. It'll overflow even into the country if enough of us line up with it. Imagine, if you will, everybody you meet, every, everywhere you go, you're positive in every word you speak. After a while, people begin to recognize that 5,000 plus people, everywhere they go, they begin to recognize there's something about that group of people. They'll start thinking and saying, you must be from that Revealing Truth Church. All y'all positive over there. Yeah. Amen. So you'll begin to recognize that. The other thing you'll recognize is everybody that's not doing that, they're going to stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah. So there's a, there's a dual benefit Amen. to being positive and saying only things that are uplifting and life building. Amen. Yeah. So today, in order for you to really understand the impact of words, we're going to talk about it from God's perspective. There are some things that we've taught before in the past. Some of you may not have been here, so it's going to be like a, a rehearsal or, or, or renewal, a summary of some things that you've learned before. For you know, like Charles Capp's book, the power, the creative power of the tongue. Well, you know, a lot of that information and that revelation we were taught 20, 30 years ago. Well, we're going to, you're going to learn more of it now. Amen? Amen. And so I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about the power of your words or God's word coming out of your mouth. Wh which, which is it? 
Is it the power of your words? Or is it the power of God's word coming out of your mouth that matters? Because if we don't get that right, then we can just start saying a whole bunch of stuff. And that's, that's really the problem in the body of Christ is people not saying what God said. It's people giving their opinion about what God said. It's their interpretation of what they think God said. I believe God is smarter than man. I believe God was so smart what he wanted us to know, he put it in the book. Amen. And the Bible itself says that it is of no private interpretation. So we need to stop interpreting what God said for God. Just ask him what he means. Look at your neighbor and say, if you don't understand it, ask God. You know, I, I heard a guy say one time, if you don't understand the purpose of a thing, don't ask the thing. Amen. You don't want to ask the thing. You want to ask the maker, the creator of the thing. Proverbs 18, 21. Look at this. He says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Did everybody see that? Both of them are there, right? The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Listen to how I'm saying this. They're both there. The tongue has power. If you choose to speak words of death, your tongue empowers death. If you choose to speak words of life, your tongue empowers life. Both of them are in your mouth. So every time you speak, every time you say something, you're creating something. Now, here's something else we know. Words are seed. So we can say it this way. Every time you say something and use words, you're planting something. And we know what happened to seed, right? Once you plant it, it's going to produce a harvest. So every word, everybody say every word has power to produce either life or produce death. How you choose your words is going to determine what you're producing. Look at this whole verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit, of their, fruit thereof. The Amplified says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life. So if I love life, the words that come out of my mouth are seed that produce life. If I love death, then the words that come out of my mouth are seed that produce death. So let's ask the question, are things living around you or dying around you? Let's make it even plainer. Do you have more friends today than you had five years ago or less? If you have less, your words killed your friendships. If you have more, your words produce more friends. <laughs> Look at Matthew chapter 12. Got a lot of scripture for you, so if you're patient, I'll read them all. Amen? Amen. If you're impatient, then praise God. <laughs> Matthew chapter 12. Now, again, we're focusing on the, the power and the impact of our words. Because I'm telling you, people say stuff, they don't, they don't want a harvest of that. You mad with your husband, you mad with your wife, you upset with your children, that you mad with your wife. I wish I'd never ma married you. You really mean that? Because you just sowed seed for that. But you know, I'm gonna read the scripture to you anyway. But you know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the 
lips yak. When them gums start bumping, they reveal the content of your heart. You know, they say stuff like, oh, when they see the impact or the negative effect of those negative words, sometimes we want to suck them back up, right? We, we're like, oh, I didn't mean for it to hurt you that bad. Too late. Look at your neighbor and say, too late. Once you let it go, it's a seed. And if they receive it, it's now a planted seed that will produce a harvest. I mean, those are some, uh, say things to your children. You're just stupid. Look at your neighbor said, see? see. That's going to produce a harvest of a stupid child. When they do stupid stuff, stupid does as stupid is. That's what they ought to say to you. Well, mama, you said I was stupid. Daddy, you said I was stupid, so here's the fruit of it. The dumbest child I ever seen in my life. Whoa, I'd I be careful with that one. Because it's your seed. They, they, they did the best they can with what you gave them. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. But let's look at the power of words. Because we say stuff that we don't mean. We, we speak words that we don't understand the impact of them. And we think we can just say whatever we want to say. And, and if we don't really mean it, because we just want to hurt you right now because we're mad, we think that we can just say, I'm sorry. And that, that covers it. No, I don't. Because those words go into their spirit. And it could take years what you can say, thank you, Lord. What you can say in half a second to someone that loves you can hurt them so bad that it takes years of the Holy Spirit working on them to root it out of them. And it took you half a second to say it. Many of you have experienced that. But you need to understand the power of words. You know, I said this years ago, hurt people hurt people. You wanna know why you're so mean? Probably somebody was mean to you. And what was, what was it that they used to demonstrate or to hurt you? What, what did they use, a brick, a stick? No, probably words. So as believers, as Christians, it's up to us now to take authority over the power of our tongue. Because it said the tongue has power. It has power to produce life and it has, it has power to produce death. We're the ones that, as the governor of that, we're the ones that determine what it's gonna produce. But every time you open your mouth, you're producing something. Amen? Amen. All right, now watch this. Verse 20, 20, uh, 32. <clears throat> and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whos, whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Look at Abe say, you really need to underline that. And, and make sure you understand <laughs> that you, there are words that you can say concerning Jesus, the Son of Man, but you better not open your mouth against the Holy Spirit because once you do, you now have built a barrier between you and your connection to God. That's what's important about that. See, the Holy Spirit was the one that Jesus sent, according to John 16, to be a comforter and a guide to us. So if you're speaking against your God, you're guiding yourself. You understand? Yes. Well, no, I, I just pray to Jesus. Well, you go, anything you do in the earth realm, you do it through the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you and I according to the word of God. He's not presently active involved in your everyday life. It's the Holy Spirit that's actively presently involved in our everyday life. Now you gotta stay in the Trinity, amen? amen. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are, are one. But the active part of that Trinity is the Holy Spirit in the earth today. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And that's why the scripture says it the way it does. If, if you begin to speak against the Holy Spirit, you're speaking against the very God that's on the inside of us to help us recognize truth from error. God said, I'm gonna write my, my word on the, on the tab tablets of your heart, which is your spirit. So the Holy Spirit communicates with your spirit. Born again, to be born again means you're now actively and creatively acknowledging that part of you that's like God. <laughs> to not be born again means you're ignoring that part of you that's like God. Everybody understand? Yes. Okay, so when you get born again, you don't get new feet, you don't get new head, you, you know, you know, that lie they told you in church. You, you, you gave the pastor your heart, you know, deacons your hand and the, and the Lord your heart. And, and now you looked at your feet and your feet looked new and you looked at your hands and your hands did too. And now that's a song. It's not the truth. No, physically you're the same. Why is this? In your mind, mentally, you're still the same. That's why you got to renew your mind. What gets born again is your spirit. And what is that? What does that mean? Literally, what does that mean? That means your born again spirit that was, that was uh, separated from God has now been reconnected with God. Amen? That's how you get born again. Everybody with me? <clears throat> so, you don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't ever want to offend the Holy Spirit. So don't be, don't be entertaining and speaking words <clears throat> that offends the Holy Spirit. He says, all right, verse 33. Either, watch this, make the tree good or his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. Look at your name. He ain't talking about trees. He's talking about people. And the fruit he's talking about is the words that come out of their mouth. Okay, so what was he saying? You know, if you're a Christian, then good things ought to come out of your mouth. If you're a heathen, then we expect negative, hateful, corrupt things to come out of your mouth. Jesus said, judge the tree by the fruit that it bears. Now, many Christians have not produced the right fruit with the words coming out of their mouths. And so we got to work on that. Look at David say, we got to work on that, all of us. So that every word, not every other word, not every other word every other day, every word every day got to line up with his word. Are you listening to me? Look at this. He said, oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? Oh, so now we know if, if, if it's difficult, hard for you to speak good things, it's because there's evil present. He said, oh, here we go. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if I'm having trouble saying good things to my wife, good things to my husband, good things about my children, good things about other members, good things about heathens, good things about everybody all the time, I got a heart problem. Amen. There, listen, there's not enough good in my heart for me to be good all the time. I only got 10 minutes of good a day. You meet me in that 10 minute window. I got something good to say to you. 
But the rest of the day ain't nothing but hell coming out of my mouth and negativity. You know, that's most people's walk of life. You know, you know how you do. You, you look to observe their continents so you can decide how you're going to have to deal with them that day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know anybody like that? Look at your neighbor and say, is that you? You know. <laughs> God is saying we're supposed to be positive every day. We're supposed to speak good things every day. Matter of fact, people, people feeling bad ought to be trying to find you, look, search you out so you can say something to make them feel good. That's what God is trying to show us. Man, I tell you what, bless God, I just, I mean, I just feel, I feel like, boy, I feel like a dirty rag. I got to get around somebody that's going to tell me the truth about what God said about me. Even when I don't want to say it. I don't feel like it. You know, it's easy to be negative. Yes, sir. It's really difficult sometimes to be totally positive about everything. I don't see where he give us much wiggle room in here. <laughs> oh, you listen. Everything's going to change if you obey the word. Every day, every time you open your mouth, something good coming out. Something that's going to build, not destroy. Something that's going to encourage, not discourage. Well, pastor, what if I ain't got nothing encouraging to say? Shut up. <laughs> Go mute. Shut it down. Don't say a word. You're just sitting around like this. <laughs> Why you ain't saying nothing? <laughs> Can't. <clears throat> no, don't say that. Because that'll communicate negativity. No, no. See, we, we, we control. I'm going to show you this in a minute. We're controlling things the wrong way when we could control them the right way. Because your tongue has power. Look at your name and say, your tongue has power. <laughs> now, you've been using it. You've been using that power the wrong way. Listen. He says, a good man or woman, out of the good treasure of, of the heart, bringing forth good things. Now, you decide. Are you good or bad? Are you good or evil? He said, and an evil man or woman out of the evil treasures bringing forth evil things. I love the fact that he uses those two words, good and evil. Well, it's it, it, it bad, but it ain't that bad. No, it's evil. If you say, if you're gossiping, if you're <laughs> saying negative, hurtful, mean, detrimental, Wicked things about people. Evil. Yeah. If you're saying things that's going to turn somebody's perception of them from good to bad, that's evil. Because mm -hmm. you don't like them. You don't want nobody else to like them. So when you say something about them, you make sure you put your little slant on it. <laughs> what do you think about Brother John? Well... You didn't say a lot, but you said a lot. You said a lot without using a lot of words. We got to put that in check. What if they repented? What if, maybe they were bad. Maybe they were as bad as you, but they repented. They weren't around. You know, I discovered that when people repent before God, they're not obligated to send me a memo. They've changed, they've moved on. I'm still mad and upset with them because of what they did to me or whatever. No, just be, be, be nice, kind, good to everybody. I don't know. I don't know what you and the Lord got going on. Amen? Amen. Matter of fact, you might not have nothing going on with the Lord. I really need to say positive things about you then. Even more so. I 
I can't find a place or a situation or a circumstance where it benefits Greg Paul or the kingdom of God or my assignment in the world to speak negative about other people. Amen. So I'm on a mission. Yes. At least for the next 10 years. I guess if I fail, then I don't, I don't know. I doubt it because this is pretty, I can do this. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. <clears throat> he said, but I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Listen to this in the Amplified, verse 36. He said, but I say to you, <clears throat> on the day of judgment, men will have to give account for every idle, listen to this, inoperative, non-working word they speak. You just run around, just sit around bumping your gums. What are you talking about? Nothing. Well, shut up until you got something to talk about. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you, you'd be surprised at, at, the, at the direction idleness will take you. Let me tell you what it's like. People that talk without direction or purpose are like people that travel without direction or purpose. You waste a lot of time and fuel and you'll probably be riding in circles. When you sit around and you begin to talk to people without direction and without purpose, you're going to say things or entertain things that are not profitable to you. That's right, amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, what, what, we, we building something here. So if I'm talking to you, we working on something. Amen. Word or seed. We working on a relationship to make it better. You know, I've, I've been around 60 years now. And you know what I know? I know I don't like sitting around people that's tearing me down. Right. Matter of fact, I ain't spending no time with people that ain't got nothing good to say. Right. I'll bring my banner that I'll wave for your success. You pull out your banner and wave it for my success and we gonna hang. But if I pull out my banner to cheer my pom-poms, to cheer your, your success, and, and I'm rallying your cause, and you pull out an ax to cut me. Thank you. This meeting's over. Yeah, I, I'm sure pretty simple about that, man. <clears throat> I don't need help to do bad. I can do bad all by myself. I can be down on myself. I'm not, but I could be. So if I'm with you, or we together, then we're together to build something for the kingdom of God. And it's good. So that's what we ought to be talking about. Good things. How are we going to kick the devil's butt, not each other's? Makes sense to me. How are you listening? Idle words. I call it nonsense conversations. Just don't make no sense at all. Yeah, you, you sit around giving everybody your opinion. They can even say, don't nobody care. <laughs> Not really. Well, what I, I feel about it. Keep your feeling to yourself. We want to know what God said to you about this and what God's saying to you about that and, and what the Lord's saying to you about me. And I want you, I want, I want you to tell me that. Then I'll tell you what the Lord's saying to me about you. Oh, now we can talk about some stuff. Well, you were praying and, you know, just think about Christians that you never, you never heard them say what the Lord said to them. You know why? Because they ain't talking to them. Amen. Huh? If you were talking about Sammy, about somebody's mammy, then I guess you could figure that out. Right? You tell everybody, man, they're talking about my mama. I'm going to slap inside his head. You say it one more time. 
Ain't no confusion in that. Don't nobody like that. Well, how come we don't talk about what the Lord is saying to us? Uh, let me say it right. Talk to people about what the Lord is saying to us about them and how he's going to bless them. Because if the Lord is talking, I can tell you right now, he ain't saying nothing negative. Hey, well, he gave me the spirit of discernment. There ain't no such spirit. There is a gift of the Holy Spirit called the discerning of spirits. And that is divine insight into spiritual things. That's not God showing you somebody's sin. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I perceive because you got that, that micro miniskirt on that you bees a loose woman. No, that's, that's, that's your opinion based on your interpretation of an appearance. Jesus said, judge not based on appearance, but by the spirit. The biggest hoe of the church may have the longest dress. He's showing nothing but attitude. Just in. Amen. Amen. So we got to get our mouths right. Yes, sir. We, we, we sit around saying stuff. Don't nobody want to hear it? Amen. It ain't building nothing. It's not encouraging. Brother, you can make it. Man, I messed up again. Yeah, that's all right, man. You, if you knew how many times I messed up, you'd be bored with the list. <laughs> so I ain't going to even take you there. Let's talk about some good stuff. Amen. Amen. You can make it. <laughs> you know, that we got to do, man. That's what you need. You don't need nobody telling you how bad it is. Oh, man, I tell you what, bless God, the economy is bad. Excuse me, I got to go. <laughs> I don't need to listen to that. Are you with me? Yes, Hebrews 11 and 3. Imagine after a few years of everybody we know only speaking positive words. Oh, Ooh, son, I'm excited about the thought of the harvest from years of sowing positive seed. And instead of you trying to, you know, correct everybody for doing wrong and telling them how they should have did this and, you know, just say something good. You can find something to say that's good, right? Yes. Even if it's just good day. <laughs> and leave. <laughs> I mean, find something good to say. Only. To your children. Oh, look at that boy. He got froze up in All the time, Pastor. Yeah, why not? It's seed. If your children can't be encouraged by you, where do you think they're going to get it from? Amen. Hmm? Where do you think they're going to get it from? Hebrews 11 and 3. Are you there? Yes. <laughs> where do you think they're going to get it from? They're expecting you to encourage them. You know, Deborah and I taught our children as we were raising them. They're all grown now. But as they were growing up, we would tell them, don't let the world redefine you. We've already defined you. So don't, don't, don't worry about what they say about you at school. We love you here. Just make it back home and we'll build you back up. I don't care what they say. And, and, I, and we also told them to build your friends at church. That ain't going to change. And all them knuckleheads at school, well, let, let them do what they're going to do. Because you're only going to see them a few hours out of a day. And you ain't going to see them the rest of your life. So just make it back home. We'll encourage you. Amen. I remember when uh, I didn't say this with Greg and Chris because I didn't know it then. But I said it with Crystal and Brian every day before they left to go off to school. I would say to Crystal, who's the prettiest girl in the world? I am, Daddy. Who's the smartest girl in the world? I am, Daddy. And then she'd go off to school. I'd say to Brian, who's the handsomest young man in the world? I am, Daddy. Who's the, he was an athlete, so who's the greatest athlete in the world? I am, Daddy. And then he'd go off to school. And I remember one time it was, you know, you wonder, are they listening? So one day I walked Brian to the bus and, you know, 
and, and we were running late getting to the bus, so I hadn't said it. And so I put him on the bus and I'm walking away. He gets back off the bus <laughs> and he runs and he just looks at me. And he said, Daddy. I said, yeah. He said, say it. <laughs> oh, then I thought. I, I remember another time with him, we were riding, we were all the family was riding bicycles. And we all riding. He had a little bit of bicycle, he just belly. And he looks up at me. He said, it's a good day, ain't it, Daddy? I'll never forget that. Yeah, he remembered a good day. You know, good days come from good words. Bad days, difficult days, can be turned around with good words. I mean, it got to be a whole, whole, you know, novel. But it could be just simple. It's all right. It's going to be all right. When your children come to you with difficult situation they're going through, Baby, it's going to be all right. Now, Daddy, how you know? You got about three hours? And I'll tell you how I know. But it's going to be all right. Oh, we're getting through this. And we're going to come out on the other side better than gold. This ain't nothing but a thing. It's not the thing. It's a thing. You understand? Because when Satan presents problems to you, he presents them like, this is the end for you. Oh, this one's going to kill you. Oh, you ain't getting out of this one. You got out of the last one. I bet you don't get out of this. <laughs> How you receive from the, from the devil will determine whether you will receive from God or not. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. Listen to this. Through faith, we understand. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by what? The word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What is he talking about? Words. Everything we see was created with what we can't see which is words. The Amplified says, by faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose. Now that's important. Yes. Everything God created has a purpose. Yes, Where purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. Yes. Say that. Where purpose is unknown, purpose. abuse is inevitable. Abuse. So the reason why you speak negative to your wife, negative to your husband, negative to your children, negative to your friends, negative about your boss, think of how dumb that is. This person had enough creative energy to start a business, grew it to a point where they could not do it by themselves and needed to hire you to help them and you got enough nerve to sit there and criticize them. Amen, amen. How dumb is that? Oh, no, no, you didn't have the idea. They had the idea. That's right. You didn't make the investment. They made the investment. Right. You, you, they did all that so that in time, their faithfulness, their diligence, their commitment created an opportunity for you to feed your family Amen. and realize your dreams. Amen. And you're going to sit there and, come and, and talk about them. That's real. You wonder why they can't pay you more money. Your words are killing your creativity that could cause them to grow. Are you listening to me? You see, every time you open your mouth, you're killing something or you're creating something. Every time. Every time. Look at your neighbor and say, every time. every time. So he says, by faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order, <coughs> and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So the word of God equips us for our intended purpose. That's 
speaking the word of God to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your friends, to your coworkers, to your employees, equip them to fulfill their divine purpose. He says, so that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. God told Abram, he said, call those things that be not as though they were. I can use the creative power of God's word. I can speak God's word and call into existence what God said that I don't presently see. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say call those things that are out of existence. I come against this. Forget that. I'm for this. It is, let me show you another way to say that. You know, let's say sickness and disease attacks your body. You can sit there and say, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I'm not sick. I don't have cancer. I don't have cancer. I don't have cancer. You have not spoken the word of God yet. And you're not calling those things that be not as though they were. You're trying to call what is away. You see the difference? But if you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Well, I don't care how I feel. How I feel has nothing to do with my healing. I am the heal protecting my health. Well, now I'm calling those things that be not as though they were. Are you listening? You look at your bank account and you go, Oh, Lord Jesus. He said, no, don't call. Don't blame me for that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you see lack, look at your neighbor and say, you don't need to discuss it. What you need to talk about is abundance. Right? Call those things that why you don't sit around and talk about what you don't have? Everybody know you ain't got it, even you. Right? We don't need to have no meeting to discuss what we don't have and what we can't do. No, man, not, not one second. I could get less. We serve a can-do God. And watch this. In most cases, a have-done God. It's already done. Amen. Are you still with me? Yes. Hebrews 1 and 3. No, don't go there. I got I to gotta, I gotta speed up. Okay, look at this. You write that down, Hebrews 1 and 3. Read on your own time. Now, here's something the Lord said to me. <laughs> here's something the Lord said to me. Well, I got to get, get all I got to get in before you check out on me. Amen. No, I'm not talking about the most mature of you. I'm talking about the least amongst you, the babies. You know, babies be gone in about an hour. You, know? you say whatever you want to say. They checked out at 45. <laughs> that, that, that just be the truth, right? I mean, mature Christians, I mean, you'll sit here. You'll st as long as I'm talking, you're going to stay here. But babies, I mean, they, they, their tolerance is like, when are you going to shut up? You're looking at the watch, looking at the clock. Right? Here's something the Lord said to me. I want you to write it down. It's a quote. It's a powerful statement. <clears throat> the spirit that dominates in a person will determine the words that we speak. The spirit that dominates in a person will determine the words that we speak. Now, this is important because you have authority given to you by God to operate like God. Go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let me show you that. Genesis chapter 1. You've been playing yourself way too short. If you're a child of God, then that make you what? Like God. Right? Not kind of like God. <laughs> like God. And if you like God and you operate like God, you have the same power that God has. 
the only creatures in the earth realm that God created like him are mankind. The distinctive fact or difference between us and other things that God created is we can speak like God speaks. Everything, nothing else can speak like God speaks. But man, even angels. You know, angels do not have authority to reason or an opinion. They can only say what God said. That's it. But you and I, we can say what God said or we can say what the enemy says. Or we can create a hybrid, something in between what God said and the devil said. Because you're created like God. You can be creative in your speech. And that get a lot of people in trouble. Listen, verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Say, I have dominion. I have dominion. Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over all, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, created he them and God blessed them or empowered them. Amen. So we were created in the image and the likeness of God. We have creative power like God. Now, if you read through Genesis chapter one, it, you, you, I'm not going to take the time to read it today, but it says, and God said, 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 and then God saw everything that he had made. I said made. Now, how did he make it? He made it by seeing it. Why? Demonstrating that we are created just like God and we have the same creative power that God has. So every time you say something, you're creating something. Right. Look at names. I bet you watch what you say from now on. You know that rebellious teenager you have? You said it. And you kept saying it. And you, you kept declaring it. And then they became that. You created that with your words. You planted that seed. Well, they're, they're entering that, that age, at that, that time. You know, you, know, you know what you said. Well, say something different. You create something different. Doesn't words affect you the same way? I mean, if I walked up to you, and, and I mean, you know me, most of y'all know me, and I walked up to you, and I said, oh my God, you look so good today. Can I have a hug? God's going to bless you. And I walk away. How do you feel? But if I walk up to you and I say, get away from me, Satan. <laughs> you got problems. Right? Why did he say that? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with me? You know, a whole bunch of other One thing produced life, the other one produced death. And people do it all the time. We've gotten sophisticated in our expressions of negativity, especially Christians, because we know we're not supposed to say negative words, so we use negative expressions. Mm. <laughs> you just said a lot. See what I'm saying? We, we learn how to lie and not really lie. I'm telling you, every, every Christian knows this is a lie. Hey, we're going we gonna to paint the building next week. You're going to come by. I'm going to try to make it. <laughs> we know not to expect you. <laughs> Liar. How you know when a person that used to love you don't love you anymore? I love you, but I don't like you. Well, what does that mean? I mean, they don't love you. That means something's happened, something takes place that has altered and changed the relationship from what it used to be. Love you, but I don't like you. 
It means, and and I'll tell you something else that means. I can't afford to leave right now. (laughs) I got to hang around a little while until I can give you enough money that I can get out your presence. That's what that means, too. You got to buy me a little more time till I get up out of here. Look at neighbors, it ain't nothing but the truth. <laughs> Let me show you power perverted. Because there's power in words. We read it. That the power, the Proverbs 18, 21, that the power of life and death, or life and death rather, is in the power of the tongue. Right? Okay, let me show you power perverted. Look at Isaiah 14 and verse 13. Isaiah 14 and verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you see how if we meditate on these scriptures and, and begin to adjust how we, what we say to people and, and think before we talk, especially when we talk into God's creation. You know, I, I read a scripture once, well, it was a saying. It said, be careful how you address people you're talking to God's children. Be careful how you address them. You're talking to God's child. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 14, verse 13. Listen to what Satan says here. This is power perverted. He said, for thou hast said in thine heart. Notice where it originates. All words before you speak them originate in your heart. This is what originated in Satan's heart. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, what is the dominant word there? I. I will, I will, I will, I will. And it's selfishly motivated. When your your words concern your or or focus on your best interests you're lining up more with Satan than with God remember I've said for years love seeks to give the advantage not take the advantage everything Satan said had to do with what he wanted I will I will I will I will amen look at this Uh, Genesis 3 and 1 Power perverted. Now the serpent, verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So, okay, let's understand something about Satan and how he's going to come at you and how he's going to try to pervert your words. He, he, you know, you're not, you're not going to leave here cursing like you're a sailor. Or blankety blank blank blankety blank blank blank. That's you. You've all you got defenses against that, right? All right. That's that's not where he's coming at you. We're we're not talking about that kind of word. We're we're talking about those other words. Listen. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said? Now notice what he did. He's challenging what God said. Has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, first mistake she made, she answered Satan. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't have no business having conversations with the devil. About anything. You don't need to be talking to demons, trying to figure out their name. What's your name? Put, you know what I'm saying? Why? Don't be doing that. Don't be doing that. <laughs> and he said unto the woman, yea, as God said, calling in the question what God said, you shall not eat of every tree, uh, shall you not eat of, of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, mistake, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now, what she should have said was, okay, Let's go see what Adam got to say about that. Adam was right there. Adam, what you got to say? He's answered me questions. 
let her husband answer the question. Because the information she got, she got it from Adam. Problem. Why is Eve talking to the devil? Why didn't he go to Adam? He knew what God said to Adam. Because Adam had the authority to shut him down. But watch this. Eve had the power to influence him to listen or change what God said. So that's why he went to Eve. So she began to, her entertaining what Satan said caused something in Adam because his desire was to be pleasing to Eve too, caused him to listen to what she had to say. He's playing one against the other. You know your children will do that. Your friends, are, well, they ain't real friends, but you have to watch what people are saying. If somebody coming to you with negative stuff about somebody else, newsflash, they also gonna go to somebody else with stuff about you. Just know that. Amen? Just know that. Just write it down and, and then put it in the bank. Say, okay, that be one of them people. Because they're going to run, run you under the bus. If they're going to run somebody else under the bus, guess what? They'll run you under the same bus. Amen? I don't need to hear that stuff. Watch this. And a woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. <laughs> so my point here is, stop having conversations with demons and devils. They will always cause you to question what God said. The Bible says, judge the spirit by the spirit, whether it be of, of God. Amen? Amen? And you can judge by the, by the nature and the content of the conversation, whether it's a godly conversation or not. What do you mean? If it's positive and lines up with the word, it's God. If it's negative and does not, which means it doesn't line up with the word, then it's not God. Are you listening to me? Well, I, I, I'm just, here, here's, here's something people do. Well, I just, I, I'm just trying to understand. <coughs> well, what does the Bible say? Well, I know what the words say, but. Well, I ain't going to say nothing but what it says. No, you know what they're doing? It's called questioning, not asking a question. They're not seeking information. They're trying to cast doubt. And they'll hook you and reel you in. And before you know it, you're questioning things you used to believe. Are you listening? Matthew 15 and 18. I'm almost done. Y'all all right? Matthew 15 and 18. It's going to change our families. It's going to change our family reunions. Look what the Bible says. Verse 18 says, 1518, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the what? And they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hand defile not a man. So we don't, saved, unsaved, it's the same thing. It's con corrupting you. Amen? That's Satan's intent. Let me get you to say something that's inconsistent with what God said. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. They knew what God said, but he got them because they were listening to say something or really believe something different. Oh, you eat of that tree, you shall not surely die. That ain't what God said. 
But guess what they did? You know what's interesting about that? The garden is full of trees. God said, just don't eat off that one. Which is the one he wanted them to eat off of? The one that God said, don't eat off of. Problem. That's the very one they ate off of. Why? Because they listened to the wrong voice. If you listen to the wrong voice, you're going to end up doing the wrong thing. That's the point. Amen? You got to watch who you're listening to. Well, you know, I got, I got this kind of friend, that kind of friend, that kind of friend. Now you got a mess. <laughs> you better not try to build nothing with them because the Bible says, how could two walk together except they agree? Now, I ain't saying you can't eat with them, you know, go to lunch with them, whatever. But, you know, just be careful because if you spend enough time around the wrong people listening to what they say, it's going to change what you believe. The Bible says it like this, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. I mean, it contaminates the whole thing. Amen? Now, some of you, some of us, I'm bad myself in here, we can't afford to spend time with things that are not building our confidence in God. Amen. Well, we can't afford that, man. I ain't be sitting around with somebody going to gossip and run this person down and talk about that preacher and, you know, bury that one. Yeah, they be digging a hole for me while I'm talking about why they buried him. You got to watch it. And while you, you know, they telling you how horrible their marriage is, you listening. And they say, well, I wish my marriage, I wish, I wish my husband was as good a husband as your husband. And you just eating it up. They looking at your husband, fool. <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> you just, just smiling and grinning. And then you start telling them most stuff about how sweet your husband is. Yes. Then for long, you know, you have a little problem, a little argument, a little disagreement. Then, you know, and then she going to be talking to him about dad and... Uh oh. You know, you're such a good man. I wouldn't treat you like that. I don't know why she treats you so bad. <laughs> First Peter chapter five, verse eight. First Peter chapter five, verse eight. We gotta guard ourselves. We gotta guard our our lives. First Peter chapter five. Are you still with me? All righty. This is, this is what Deborah and I grew up on, folks. I mean, this is, this, is the, this is the meat. This is the meat of the gospel. This is stuff, man, if you don't have this right, it doesn't really matter all the other stuff you learn. You got, this is foundational stuff. Watching your words, saying positive things, which is saying the word, not just positive things. First Peter chapter five, verse eight. <clears throat> said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Listen very carefully. That tells us a lot. Number one, it tells us he can't devour anybody anytime he want to. He can't just attack your family. He can't just attack your, your body. He has to have access. N words spoken that line up with his kingdom gives him access. You understand? Negative words give Satan access to cause negative things to happen in your life. He can't just, he's, he's going about, he's seeking whom he may devour. That tells us he can't just devour whoever. What is the distinguishing factor between those he has access to and those he don't? It's what they say. Are you listening? Yes. 
I mean, it's like positive, 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 negative. Now we're going to do that to nobody. You got to be, oh, Lord, how we going to bake it? Oh, I got me one. Oh, the Lord doesn't love me. Look at what I'm going through. Got me one. Why do I have to go through this? I got me one. They're about to blame God for what the work I've been doing. Got me one. Negative. You upset, you mad that day. Because something didn't go your way. Got me one. He don't need access all day. He just need just a little bit. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Amen? Amen. He says, let me read this in the Amplified. <clears throat> Verse 6 in the Amplified. Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation, estimation under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all on him for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. That's why I don't give a care. I've already cast all the cares. I ain't worried about nothing. Look, your neighbor said, I think I'll adapt that attitude also. What is, what if we lose everything? Then we have new stuff. I got room for new stuff that's on this way. That's all I know. I don't know. I don't, that's all I know. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Don't worry about nothing. Well, you know, the doctor say you're going to die. Yeah, <laughs> ain't everybody gonna die? I mean, that's kind of what, that's kind of part of the deal now that Adam's seeing. We all gonna die. So what else you gonna tell me? Now, I, I got news for you. You don't have to die until you forgive, until you, nah, how can I say it, Lord? Until you decide to depart from your assignment. Oh, that's a dangerous place to be in. Satan can't kill you until you fulfill your assignment. I ain't going nowhere till it's time for me to go. That's what Paul did. I can do likewise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You said, well, I got, I got a bad heart, man. I look, either God will supernaturally heal you, give you a new heart, or they'll create some technology to take care of it. Either way, I'm healed. Are you listening to me? I ain't worried about none of that. I ain't worried about nothing. I ain't worried about Jack, Jill, or Stupid Hill, Humpty Dumpty, or that crazy wall. None of that. You know what worry is? It's anti-faith. Worry is anti-confidence in God. It's a failure to trust God. That's what it is. Are you listening? He said, casting the whole of your care, all of your anxieties. I read that. Verse 8, be well balanced, temperate, sober mind, be vigilant, cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Withstand him. Be firm in faith against his onset, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined. Knowing. Now, what do you need to know? You need to know the word of God or you can't stand. You cannot fight the good fight of faith without the word of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that you have the sword of the spirit, which is the what? So the weaponry of spiritual warfare is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You cannot fight the good fight of faith without the word. And if you're speaking the word, guess what you're speaking? Positive words. You're not, you're not saying, I don't know what we're going to do. You're saying, this is what God said to do. Big difference. Don't ever say you don't know what to do. Because you know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you know what to do. What do I mean, Pastor? 
Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So if I don't know what to do, I know what to do. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Even if I don't understand what I'm standing on, I'm standing. Because I'm standing on his word. How is it going to turn out? I don't know how it's going to turn out. All I know is that the end is going to be good. I don't know what I got to go through, but I'm going to go through. And in the end, it's going to be good. How do you know that, Pastor Paul? Because the word says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Where did I get that from? Oh, I read it in the word. That's it. Now, if you're saying that, Instead of other stuff, then you'll see that. But if you're not saying that, you're going to see what Satan designed for you to see. If you're worried about your marriage ending in divorce, get your papers ready. Call your lawyer, because that's what you believe. But if you believe it's going to be better in the end than it was in the beginning, then that's what it's going to be. If it don't look like that, you just keep looking at what the word said it's going to be. And that's going to force it to become what God said. You raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. They be acting, they may be acting a straight up fool right now. But that ain't what you pray for. That ain't what you're believing for. How they acting is not what you said. Well, I'll have what I say. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord so if you say it, it's what? Yeah, but it don't look like it. Close your eyes. Okay, Isaiah 55, I gotta stop. So power perverted is what Satan says. Power release is what God says. Isaiah 55. How many of you know I can, I, can, I can stay here all day and remind myself of how to live? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. We can preach right up until the Super Bowl. <laughs> just, just. Hey man, all them people already got paid. I wouldn't be worried about that stuff. You know, like it's on Sundays on the NFL season. Folks be trying to get out to go to the theater. Well, well, I understand that. But, you know, if you can't, if you don't know how to live, going to a game for a distraction ain't going to help you. That's what entertainment is. It, it's designed to be a distraction from your present reality. And that's why we love to be entertained when we're going through hell. Are you listening to me? We need to, we need to check ourselves. Why do I need to do this now? Why, why do I feel like this? No, no, you need to get it right. It's like being broke and going on vacation because you need to get away. Bad idea. Pro folk don't need to go on vacation. No, 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 baby, you're going to go on your vacation, spend money you don't have to solve problems you don't even, can't even understand. You're going to come back negative because you couldn't afford to be there. And you, you're mad while you're there. You can't really enjoy yourself because you're broke. You ever been to Disney broke? You ever took your children, 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 children to Disney broke? Ain't nobody having no fun. They can't eat nothing. They can't do nothing. It's all, no, no. Come on, boy, no. Get that sandwich out that bag. Come on. Can mama, can I, mama, can I have a no? No, you can't have no hat. You can't have no T-shirt. You can't have no candy. You know, we barely got through the gate. You know? Ain't nobody having no fun. You should have stayed at home. Broke self. Right? <laughs> Packing all the little nasty sandwiches in the bag. And they're all crushed up. And you know, you see your friends, man, they eating, they eating good, man. You, you hide with your little sandwich over in the corner. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, don't put your children through that. Just wait till it's time for you to go. 
and the Lord blesses you, you can go. Amen. Amen. Anyway, all right, let me read this and we'll go home. All right. All right, let's just, let's just read. Yeah, this, this will be good. Yeah, well, let's start at verse 7. He said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So anything you've said wrong, done wrong, repent. Amen. I mean, all negative, negative thoughts, negative words, negative plans are wicked. Are you listening to me? You know, don't, don't downplay what it really is. It's wicked. But he tells you what to do. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, your, no, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and rain it and return it not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give, watch this, seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now, what are words? Words are seed. What does God give us? Word in seed form. Are you listening? He said, I'm going to give you word as seed. I'm going to give seed to the sower. What are words? We sow words as seeds. So God said, I'm going to give you the words to sow. Are you listening to me? He says, now watch this, and we'll see what's happening here. And bread to the eater, he said, now watch this, verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So God speaks those words. God spoke, holy men of God, called by God, recorded what God had to say, and we call it the Bible. The canon of scripture, 66 books. Are you listening? Now, there's a whole lot more he said, but this is what he told those men to put together so that it would, it would give us the foundation to endure through generations. Now, our problem is we now, because of historical revisionists, we want to now get other people's words that conflict with this word, and we want to add some stuff when these words causes, us to, uh, causes a change in us that we don't want to make. And that's where you get confusion and conflicting information. Now, how, how do you properly interpret the word? With the word. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen? It's not my opinion of the word, not your opinion of the word. It's the word itself that defines itself. The Bible says it is of no private interpretation. Is when we start getting off into those private interpretations that things get very vague. Because then the word is interpreted when you use your experience and your, well, the word gets unclear when I, when I interpret it based on my experience. And you interpret it based on your experience. Now we've moved away from truth. Are you listening to me? Now, I said, so we'll be done. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Look what it says. It shall not return unto me void. So how do you not have an empty return? Say what God said. Because it can't return void. Look what he says. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Not which, what you please. God said his word is going to accomplish everything he please or intends. He says, and it shall prosper in the thing where the two I sent it. And verse 12 is the consummation of us acting out in obedience, speaking God's word. So shall you go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. So he's saying, look, 
we should be led forth with peace because we're standing on the word of God that produces peace. You know, here's what I know and you know, that no, when you say hang around people that are negative, what happens? They start talking, you start talking. Even if you have peace, you lose it. Joy leaves. You're trying to figure out what to do with all this negativity. Let's be positive, amen? amen. Every word that comes out of our mouth encourages someone. Every word that comes out of our mouth lifts somebody up. Every word, every conversation from this point forward leaves a person feeling good about themselves, feeling hopeful, not hopeless. Oh, it's going to be all right. I mean, if that's all you can say, say that. Oh, it's going to be all right. Why? How you know it's going to be all right? I'm praying. And the Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail as much, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. It's going to be all right. God's going to work it out. He's a can-do God. It's okay. Yeah, but I lost everything. You know, they're making new stuff every day. You lost old stuff. New stuff is available. Get your mind right. Get your, get your act together. Get, get ready. Prepare for what's new and forget about what's old. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, I don't know. You know, Pastor, I was, I was believing God a long time for that thing and it didn't come to pass. Then believe God for something else. Are you listening? What do you mean believing for something else? Well, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me and I'm pressing toward those things that are before me. Only thing you want to let go of anytime is something that God has already let go of. And you know what he never lets go of? You. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I ain't got time to get into this, but all them dreams you done had and all them prophet lies that you believed, <laughs> now that's what's confusing you. All the stuff you done read and everything everybody else done said. Now what is God saying? You know, especially when it comes to ministry. I've seen people wreck their lives trying to accomplish something that even if they got it done today, it would not matter because God doing something different. I'll, let you, I'll let, let, just let that simmer a little bit. God's always doing new things. Will you not perceive it? Will you not recognize it? Here's how we're going to know we're in the will of God. We're going to say what he said. Amen. Y'all get anything out of the word today? <clears throat> now in a few years, it's going to be amazing the changes that we'll make on this city and this state and this world. Starting right here with a decision. Now I believe there are pastors around the world that God said the same kind of things to. You know, we got to get our vows right. And in doing so, we're going to get right with God. Amen. Will you stand to your feet? Thank you so much for your obedience. Thank you for hanging around with me today. Amen. It's been a good day.